Hi, I'm Nathan Aspinall, the assistant conductor of the Jacksonville Symphony, and I'm here to tell you a little about our Masterworks concert in the first week of March, American Landscape. The concert is all things Americana, and what would I know about that, I hear you ask. Not very much, but here goes anyway. The concert opens with a piece by American composer Tobias Picker, which he wrote in 1986 for the Houston Symphony. He describes the inspiration for the piece in this way. Driving east from Houston along Interstate 10, you will come to a high bridge which crosses many winding bayous. These bayous were left behind by the great wanderings over time of the Trinity River across the land. When it rains, the bayous fill with water and begin to flow. At other times, when it is dry, they evaporate and turn green in the sun. The two main bayous are called Old River and Lost River. Where they converge, a sign on the highway reads, Old and Lost Rivers. What links all the music in this program is the depiction of and the connection to nature. The composers use music to describe the feeling of being surrounded by nature, and they use nature as an allegory for human life. In Picker's piece, the music is calm and still gently moving and flowing through time. It is a beautiful way to begin this journey through nature and sound. Most concerts in the Masterworks series here at the Jacksonville Symphony include a concerto, which showcases the virtuosity of one instrument, but not often is that instrument a mandolin. The mandolin is a descendant from the lute and the strings are plucked with a plectrum. There are eight strings on a mandolin, and it's tuned just like a violin, but with two strings per pitch, it has extra resonance and allows for the mandolin's signature tremolo effect, the fast movement back and forth over the strings, creating a shimmering lyrical sound. There aren't many mandolin pieces in the orchestral repertoire. Perhaps the two most famous examples are Concerti by Vivaldi and Hummel, but the concerto that we're performing is a much more recent composition by living American composer and mandolinist Jeff Midkiff, who will be joining the symphony for this performance as a soloist. In the 20th century, the mandolin also found its way into the symphonies of Gustav Mahler and music by Schoenberg, as well as jazz and bluegrass. Midkiff takes all of this and develops his own unique sound and structure, full of contrast and color, a dialogue between the mandolin and orchestra. A lot of people describe Aaron Copland as the father of American music. I don't know about that, but he certainly captures an essence of what it means to be American and can describe it through the sounds of the orchestra. Copland's opera The Tenderland, which he completed in 1954, was inspired by the James Agee book, Let Us Now Praise Famous Men. Set in the Great Depression, it chronicles the lives of impoverished sharecroppers. The opera has had a troubled life, never finding particular acclaim or success. In fact, it's been described as something resembling Steinbeck meets Oklahoma. Regardless, it contains some very beautiful music, and the orchestral suite that the orchestra will perform in this concert is a real gem, capturing the openness of the landscape and the passions of the people. The final piece in the program, Appalachian Spring, was commissioned by choreographer Martha Graham and first performed in 1944. It depicts a spring celebration of American pioneers, set near a Pennsylvanian farmhouse with a bride, groom, preacher and congregation all taking part. The music opens with quiet, tranquil, open harmonies, conjuring up images of the vast American landscape, capturing the stillness but also the warmth. The music becomes lively and angular as the characters appear and the festivities commence. Towards the end of the piece, Copeland includes the famous tune, Simple Gifts. It starts off soft and unassuming, but builds to a big climax, a symbol of hope and strength. And the piece ends as it began, with quiet, naked chords, which suggests both the timelessness of the landscape and the timelessness of the hopes and aspirations of the American people. Copeland's music gives us optimism and hope. It is a vision for peace and fulfillment. For hundreds of years, composers have used depictions of nature as symbols for human feeling and experience, whether in a Schubert lead, a Richard Strauss tone poem, or an intimate miniature by Ravel or Respighi. In doing so, we are forced to engage and imagine 
there are no limits or restrictions. Our minds are free to wander. The rustling of a tree, the gentle chill of a sea breeze, the calming of a still lake. The ambiguity becomes truer without the burden of reality. Relating our inner self to the outer world allows us to reflect and imagine. This program provides a wonderful opportunity to explore life mirrored in nature, and I hope you can join us.